So let's have a look at the idea of the parallel transport of a vector along a given path in a curved space. How do we compare vectors in curved spaces? We can't simply add or subtract because vectors at different points have different basis vectors. And so if the addition and subtraction vectors doesn't make sense, what can we do? Well, it turns out that we can compare the directions of different vectors at different points. And we do that through a process of parallel transferring or transporting one vector to the other. And that allows for us to make a comparison afterwards. So let's just consider for the moment uh, in Euclidean space, we have some curves specified by the vector here um, and some arbitrary vector field. Um, the parameterization variable here is lambda. No particular reason for lambda, it could be any. The path we're concerned with is in blue. And we've got some vector v, and we want to parallel transport it along that curve. And we're doing this at the moment in a flat space or Euclidean space. Okay, so here's our vector here. These are our basis vectors. Because we're in Euclidean space, flat space, the basis vectors are constant everywhere, no matter where we look. All right. So the vector v is held constant as it's moved along the curve. It's transported parallel to itself, hence the name parallel transport. Um, and what it means is that both the components and the basis vectors are held constant. They're not changed. And the condition for this is, down here, the derivative with respect to lambda of the vector v gives us this condition here, dv alpha d lambda is zero. That's the components of the vector, the derivative of them with respect to the parameter is zero. So that's in flat space. Right. And that means, that condition there means that the vector is transported without any change to its length or direction. We're going to pick up this same idea in curved space, where we're going to transport one vector to another. But because the basis vectors vary from point to point in a curved space, we need to consider the covariant derivative of v. And that's given down here by this expression here. Given that we're interested in what happens along a curve, then we're after the intrinsic or absolute derivative. And these are the components of the intrinsic or absolute derivative, and we want to set them to zero. So the vector is parallel transported along the curve. Well, nice curved space, sphere. The surface of the sphere gives us a nice uh, curved space. Um, and the path we're going to use is the one in blue, and the direction we're going to take is the North Pole all the way around anti-clockwise back to the to our starting point. Now <clears throat> the tangent plane starting at the North Pole, our vector V, right, tangent to the sphere in the tangent plane. So the point P, the vector V lies in the tangent plane to the point P. Now the vector starts at P, it moves to Q, and then it keeps following parallel par moved in a parallel sense to itself all the way around the loop here until it ends up back where it is. We do this in little small steps where the parameter changes from lambda to lambda plus delta lambda. So we do little incremental changes in which we keep the vector parallel to itself as we go. Of course we're bound to the surface, we can't move off the surface of the sphere and so our vector v will always be tangent lying in the tangent plane as we parallel transport it around. So at the point Q, the parallel transport of vector V lies in the tangent plane to the point Q. And throughout the parallel uh, transport process, the vector V lies in a tangent plane to each point on its path. We move at incremental amounts, keeping it parallel to itself, but staying attached to the surface, but tangent to the surface. Eventually, uh, as we go all the way around the loop, the finished vector is not pointing in the same direction. It's different. It's pointing in a different direction. And that's entirely due to the curvature of the surface. In flat space, this doesn't happen. We would go around a closed loop and come back to where we started from. But in a curved space, that doesn't happen. There is a change. There's a change in the direction of the vector. What that also shows 
is that the change is also path dependent. We're going this way anti-clockwise and the vector ends up pointing over here to our right. Whereas if we'd gone clockwise, the vector would end up pointing to our left. So it is very much path dependent. Right. So given this vector, the condition for parallel transport is that if the components or the covariant derivative of the vector are set equal to zero. So the process of parallel transport of vectors makes it possible to compare vectors located at different points on a manifold. And that's the end of that.